Hello everyone, I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a platform for natural and holistic therapies. Tonight we will be talking about immune system and naturopathy, how naturopathy can help. Joining me is Dr. Drew Jamison from Canada. Dr. Drew is a naturopathic doctor who has helped heal 5,000 plus clients and he specializes in pain management, weight loss, and nutritional programming. So Dr. Ru should be joining me in one second. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to put it in the comment. Um, you know, you're welcome to do that. This is a Q&A session. And Dr. Ru would be joining me in one second. So um, you can ask also learning about his personal journey because he had himself struggled with um, some of the issues. Um, hi there. How hey, are you? good. How are you? Good, good. Well, great to uh, great to meet you. Same to you. Yeah. How's your day going? Great, great. All right. Yeah, I was just um, introducing our clients, our, our users, our, our viewers uh, about our topic on immune system and the and you know and the muscle as medicine. So uh, this is Dr. Drew. Maybe you can introduce yourself, sure. and then we can go into the questions. Sounds and great. Hi, yep. uh, hi uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm Dr. Drew Jameson, and I'm a naturopathic physician in the Vancouver, British Columbia area. I have two clinics, one in New Westminster and Burnaby, and I actually do a bit of teaching at the school I graduated from. And my practice is mostly centered around sports injuries, pain management. Definitely this year, there's been a lot of stress, anxiety, and sleep that has crept in. So I've been working with a lot of patients on that. And then obviously a lot of digestion, gut health, and immune system has been a massive theme for 2020. So those are the main areas I hang out in. And uh, that's kind of what I've formed my practice into over the last several years. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been an absolute roller coaster of a year. Uh, yeah. Like as busy now as I ever have been. And I've been in practice now for a little over five years. And it is been the craziest eight to 10 months this last little while. But, you know, I love what I do. I'm really passionate about it. I've just been head down helping as many people as I can, harnessing the power of, you know, the internet, technology, telemedicine. There's a lot of systems we have in place now with respect to how we run our practice that weren't in place before this pandemic started. So it's been really cool to just link up with other colleagues and people like yourself and getting as much good information out there to people as we can get. So yeah, yeah pe people need our help now more than ever. Like, it's really, really rough out there. I totally get it. So I'm just busy trying to be part of the solution here um, and, yeah. and helping people with their health. No, I, I, I thank you so much for, I, I know all our experts have been so busy and everyone has been contributing their time to help others. And that's what we are trying to do, you know. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about your personal health journey too and what, what, sure. you know, what inspired you to become a naturopathic doctor. Yeah, it's a good question because I find most people that come to naturopathic medicine, there's a personal connection to it, right? So for yeah. myself, back in my maybe early to mid-20s, I had a whole bunch of sports injuries, chronic pain, and I felt like I was just kicked around the system. So they sent me for scans and tests. They gave me painkillers. And the real killer was they told me to stop doing things I love to do. So I was like an avid power lifter. I played a lot of football. And it just kind of crushed me at 25 to think, like, really? I'm just going to be stuck with this pain? And you want me to stop doing the things I love to do? It just didn't sit well, right? So after a few years of that, uh, my mom, oddly enough, found an ad in the paper for a naturopathic doctor that did a lot of sports medicine. And I had seen a lot of people at that point, And I said, what the hell? Let's go see what this guy has to say. Maybe, maybe he's got something for me that no one else has. And so he introduced me to regenerative injection techniques, prolotherapy, fixing my gut, optimizing my nutrition. And, you know, in a matter of three to six months, he helped me reverse all my injuries I didn't need painkillers anymore. And I, I kind of was like, I was relieved, but I was also pissed off that no one told me about this stuff sooner because yeah. I felt like I had just exercised the system as much as I could. And then I finally found a doctor that, you know, cared, took the time, listened, and actually had, um, you know, treatments that would resolve my problems. So I knew right then and there I was in the right place. And that was kind of the doctor that, that I'd been missing in my life. So he took me under his wing for probably six years. I was his patient. And we became wow. very close. And then eventually when I was older, he just turned to me and said, you should go back to natural medicine. You have the background for it. We need more people doing sports medicine. The profession needs more guys. He's like, go apply. We really need good people um, getting out in the world as NDs. So I went and looked at the curriculum. And then at that time, I realized I'm like, we get to learn nutrition and acupuncture, all the gut stuff and the needling, uh, 
the uh, Chinese medicine, the herbal medicine, like just and chiropractic. It just went on and on, right? I was like, this is a wonderful curriculum because if I didn't do that, I probably would have went back to school as a chiropractor, but I realized that was part of the curriculum. And yeah. so I knew that was the program for me. And so I enrolled, this was back in, yeah, 2011, graduated 2015. And so it's crazy, almost a decade's flown by. So yeah, there it is. That's amazing. That's amazing. So let's talk about the topic is immune system today. So and, and that has been a hot topic, right, throughout the 2020. I mean, unfortunately, all, all over the world, so many lives have been lost. So what do we, how do we strengthen? I mean, the immune system, everybody talks about oh, your immunity. Yes, yeah. maybe do this, do that. So let's just get your viewpoint. What sure. You and this is stuff I've been talking about for years, obviously, but specifically since March, I've been highlighting, okay, there's clear data showing certain micronutrients are needed to make sure the immune system runs properly. And then also I've been talk talking about the things that cause immune suppression, right? Because it's always a bit of both. It's yeah. got to be a bit of both. So I'm very clear with people that there's things that support your immunity and things that harm it. And you got to do less of the things that harm it and more of the things that increase it. And there's been a lot of, I want to say, division out there because th there's a certain group of people who think, doesn't really matter what you do. It's not going to make any difference. And then there's us, which is MD stand up and say, no, no, hold on a second. There's a ton you can do to increase the strength of your immune system. And this again, dates back. I was doing posts and talking about this in March and people come out of the woodwork and like to debate it, but it's very clear in the science that you need certain micronutrients. So the big ones we're talking about with people are vitamin D is that number one. If I had to pick only okay. one for this, vitamin it would be that. But we get it from this. I mean, we, we just only get it from the sunlight. What are the other things we can do to? That's it really. You know, and a lot of people wow. would say, okay, I'm not getting enough sun. Most people live way too north of the equator to get enough direct sunlight, but I'm a huge advocate of direct sunlight whenever possible. So if you live yeah, in an so area where you can get direct to increase your, but go for it, you should be doing like 15 to 20 minutes a day if you have good sunlight. But for most people in Canada, because I test vitamin D levels, and I'd say like four or five people so are really, really low in vitamin D. Yeah. Uh, your connection went a little bit. Um, I know my connection's bugging out a little bit. Hopefully that'll fix it. <laughs> so um, just, yeah, sorry, go ahead. You, you said uh, vitamin D, you encourage people to be in the sunlight as much as, uh, much as, as, as we can. And we have someone who's joining us from Asia. And I think you, uh, whoever is joining us from Asia don't have a problem with the sunlight, but people <laughs> like yourself who are living up north, you know, what do you yeah, do? It's you a know, different story, right? And, and, and your immunity is yeah. going down. That's what you're saying, right? Every time we see this, we see this, the cold and flu season, they call it. But really, it's, you know, sometimes just less sun, less vitamin D, therefore less immune activity. So when I test Canadians, I find four out of five are pretty low. And so we're big into repleting them as much as we can, right? So oral vitamin D3, it's very important to take it with K2. I find safe dosing anywhere between four and 5,000 a day, but it really depends on their blood levels, right? So we're testing and repleting all the time. And if people are critically low, we will sometimes introduce intramuscular shots. I mean, there are fortified foods, but you know, at the end of the day, without a lot of direct sunlight, sometimes people are just at a deficit and, and you need to uh, step things up a bit. But you know, when it comes to risk of death or bad outcomes with what's floating around out there, like there's about a 15 times increase of your vitamin D deficiency. So you have to get on this. It's a very, very important one for other systems as well, not just immunity, but for heart health and mood, bone health, all that stuff. It's a pro hormone. So like there's just so many things it works on. And then other nutrients that have been very big on uh, selenium, Zinc, obviously, those trace minerals are yeah. critically important for your immune system, generating glutathione, which is an important, uh, you know, immune molecule. And then uh, vitamin C. And sometimes we'll talk about uh, reishi extracts. The mushroom extracts are really good at boosting deep immunity. And uh, iodine as well, mostly for thyroid, but sort of a, a good way to boost the immune system too. So those are all the micronutrients that we're, we're, we have on our radar when, when we have someone that has, you know, an immune system deficiency or we just want to protect ourselves and our loved ones. So that's stuff I've been suggesting to people pretty much daily for, for the last 10 months here. Okay, so, um, and, and, and what about the food? Uh, like you talked about the mushrooms a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the reishi mushrooms are good. The shiitake and maitake, they all are rich in beta D-glucans, which have been shown to be very potent immune modulators. So they act at a very deep level. You can use them medicinally in soups and broths. You can eat them however you want to prepare them. Obviously, hot water extracts are used as a supplement, but... 
those are great because they impact the bone marrow at a very deep level to push out more white cells and red cells. And for those of you watching that don't know, your white cells are your first line of defense when it comes to viruses, bacteria, and all that kind of stuff. So um, astragalus would be another herb that's really good for pushing out more white cells at the, at the deep bone marrow level along with reishi there. So yeah, if people are into cooking and using those medicinally, absolutely, you should be using those. And then the, the best ways to prepare them for a supplement form would be like a hot water extract of those. So yeah, those are really good options. Um, I want to say some other food options. I mean, sometimes you'll see in, in eggs have a little bit of vitamin D and cod liver oil as a supplement will have a little oh, bit of God, vitamin D. Mind. Yeah, that's another way to get it. I mean, the issue is to dose cod liver oil high enough to get enough vitamin D, you're probably going to overdose on the vitamin A. Like, so there, there's just some logistical things that make it really tough, in my opinion, to get medicinal doses of vitamin D. So I'm quite often supplementing people with, you know, that four to 10,000 IU range. And I want to mention once more, because it's very important, if you're going to take that amount of vitamin D3, you should really be looking to K2 as well. Vitamin K2 is very important to keep the, the calcium levels in the blood balanced. Otherwise, you can get hypercalcemia if you just go crazy with vitamin D and you don't have enough K2 coming in. So K2 is so those are, you know, K2 is so, for the absorption of vitamin D, right? That's, is that what it is? Or? It, helps, it helps put calcium in the bones and teeth. So when vitamin D level goes up or your intake goes up, you'll pull more calcium into your bloodstream through your gut lining from food, right? So you don't want too much vitamin D increasing your calcium. So if you're going to take high amounts of vitamin D, you want to make sure uh, that you get the calcium out of the bloodstream. And when you take vitamin D with K2, it clears the bloodstream. So it just moves calcium so, to the right uh, spot. You are breaking up in between. So I, I just want to repeat, vitamin D with, with the K2, that, that's what you said. Like yeah. you, you, were, you were breaking up yeah. in between. So I don't know, your network sure. connection is not as, yeah. Uh, so I just want to- Yeah, to sorry, to sometimes it's a little- Vitamin D with, with K2 is what, what, what I think Dr. Du was, uh, he, that's what he was talking about. Selenium, zinc, Reiki mushrooms, you know, that's really good. I think your connection is back now. So I just want to repeat, could we repeat because you were breaking up. Sure, of course. So vitamin D with a K2, selenium, zinc, Reiki mushroom. And then you said, talked about some herbs. Can we talk about some herbs also that are good? Yeah, so astragalus herb was the one that I mentioned. That's astragalus. one of the king of uh, astragalus, yeah. And uh, that'll work similar to how reishi does, right? So it'll help increase the bone marrow production of your red cells and white cells. Yeah, it works similar to those. So that's another good immune one as well. It's considered a deep immune tonic with reishi. Okay. So and those would be good food, options. Uh, yeah. Any particular? You said uh, selenium and uh, food. That the, the food those are rich in selenium and zinc. Load up on that. Um, yep. And the herbs, like uh, you talked about, the astragalus herb. Any other herb uh, that you recommend? As for, and yeah, just those are the main two for deep immune that I'm talking about. I mean, there's antiviral herbs you can take if you are going through, um, you know, and fighting something like licorice root extract might be a good one to consider there because it's pretty antiviral. Um, uh, it would depend if you're trying to licorice root, licorice root, licorice root, yeah, yeah, licorice yeah. root, yeah. Yeah, licorice is yeah. widely used in in, uh, in Chinese medicine as well as in uh, Ayurveda as well. I think licorice is very yeah. good uh, for that. Super popular, right? It's in almost yeah. every formula if you look at Chinese medicine, yeah. So licorice root is another one that Dr. Drew is uh, suggesting. Um, and then uh, um, selenium, zinc, licorice root, reishi mushroom, astragalus. A vitamin D with K2. These are the things that, that yeah. uh, he, you know, he's suggesting. And then I don't know about the dosage in the sense like people should cons do consultation with a qualified uh, naturopath or a qualified expert before they start loading up on, you know, you don't want to start loading up on all these things without understanding yeah. what, what it can start doing to your body, right? I mean, I, I personally... 100%. Yeah. And uh, that's why I'm such a big fan of testing and repleting vitamin D, not just blindly taking massive doses. And that's yeah. another reason why taking it with K2 is important because you'll get an imbalance of the fat soluble vitamins if you don't take them kind of together. And that reminds me of another one. Vitamin A is a pretty important one too for the immune system. Okay. So, vitamin so that would be a active vitamin A. Vitamin A. Vitamin yeah. A and vitamin also? A. Yeah. Okay. Super antiviral, so good for upper respiratory tracts. Got it, got it. 
So vitamin A, what are the foods that, that one can take for vitamin A? So as we mentioned earlier, that would be your cod liver oil. Anything that's deep in orange is typically going to have vitamin A. So like sweet potatoes, yams, carrots, all those are going to have vitamin A in them. Just look for that color. Yeah. And then for the zinc and selenium. So your network connection is not very good, Dr. Yeah. Drew. So that's why I'm, I'm repeating everything. So vitamin A in, in um, carrots, yams, sweet potatoes, that's what he's talking about. Vitamin D with K2, that, because, you know, vitamin D, most of us are deficient. Um, and so vitamin D is emphasizing majority of the time we get it from sunlight. Then he's talking about selenium, zinc, uh, astragalus, um, reishi mushrooms, um, and then licorice five things that, that I understand. Um, and then uh, what about the muscle as medicine? Let's, let's see if that's a little better in here. Yeah. How's that is, connection? It How's that sound? It, it's much better. Yeah, it's sorry, that so one much. room that's is not great sometimes. Me. Yeah, no problem. Okay. I think you it's, summarized it pretty good there. Yeah, that, that all makes a lot of sense. <laughs> all right, let, let's try and there. So what about muscle as medicine? What is that concept? I mean, what is that concept? Yeah, it's a big one for me. I have a sports and athletic okay. background. And so I think when it comes down to a lot of chronic disease, metabolic syndrome, general unhealthiness, yeah. it's, not, it's not always that we carry too much fat. It's that most people carry not enough muscle. Oh, I And see. muscle, I see. muscle to okay. me is it's very cal it's calorie consuming. It's a glucose disposal agent. It absorbs, you know, essentially all the food we eat much better than fat ever will. And yeah. it keeps your hormones balanced, again, you know, it produces. You, um, you're breaking up again. So I think uh, we can, yeah, yeah you're break. it's not very clear. So I think uh, what we can do is we can summarize right now because it, your, your voice is still, it's breaking up and it's not clear. So let's just stick to the immune system only, uh, what, what Dr. Drew talked about. If you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, let us know. Um, your voice was breaking up, so we're going to wrap up right now uh, because it's it's not sure. very clear. Uh, yeah. So so just to summarize, I think I summarized it earlier as well about the immune system. And let us know your feedback and comments, and and uh, you know we are here to help you. With that, I'd like to wrap up this session. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.